My name's Heather Elizabeth Parkhurst, and my boobs look like a corpse. You know, the Walking Dead, a zombie? <laughs> they would use my boobs. Well, that's kind of harsh. I decided I needed to go big and get my boobs done, and I went from a size A to a double D. They looked amazing, they looked natural. Going from an A to a double D with one set of breast implants is not very common. The breast can only expand up to a certain extent with one operation. And if you try to go past that, you can have major problems like tearing of muscle, like the incision opening up, and like stretch marks. And then I got them reduced. The sad part was they looked horrible. That's interesting because I reduce implant sizes in a lot of my patients and usually it's a very simple procedure where you take the big ones out and you put smaller ones in. You have the patient wear a nice tight bra for a couple of months to allow that skin to retract a little bit and they usually look pretty darn good afterwards. So I went back and that's when the doctor came up with this new technique that he used on me called the bolster lift. I've never heard of the bolster lift. Now she says that at the time she had her surgery done this was new which means that if it were good it probably would have stayed and people would be doing it today which nobody is and that doesn't sound good. What he did is he took two screws he put them in my chest. It was gonna take care of the lopsided problem. Oh my gosh this is so bad. He put screws into her chest to help support her breast implants. I've never heard of this. My guess is that he put a screw on either side of her breast and then maybe some mesh or something in between it to try to hold her implant up or something. It just sounds horrible and painful and kind of dumb. Why would he do this? I started having like excruciating pain and he's like, you are really lucky that you came in now. What I had was flesh eating disease. I had MRSA and I came very close to dying. MRSA, otherwise known as MRSA, stands for Methicillin Resistant Staph Aureus. And this is a type of bacteria that's quite aggressive with infections and very few antibiotics can actually treat it. This is really bad, bad news, especially when you're dealing with breast implants. Thank you to iRestore for sponsoring this video. Thinning hair runs in my family, so I'm frequently reminded about how my hair is getting thinner as I get older. So how do you prevent that holistically? Well, the answer is low light laser therapy. Low light laser therapy provides energy to our hair follicles. This stimulates cellular activity and helps to distribute blood and nutrients to the hair follicles to help with hair regrowth. And my favorite device for low light laser therapy for the hair is the Eye Restore system. The iRestore is the only device on the market that combines 282 medical grade lasers and LEDs to provide the correct light output and power level to stimulate your hair follicles. This is just like what you see in a doctor's office, but it's done in the comfort of your own home. And with its unique design, it provides for maximal scalp coverage, and you only have to use it three times a week and you'll get results in as little as three months. This FDA cleared, clinically proven device is non-invasive, hands-free, and easy to use. The results may vary, but I love that iRestore stands behind their product with a 12-month money-back guarantee. Now, laser hair therapy can be used in conjunction or as an alternative to hair transplants and PRP treatments in order to maximize hair growth and to maintain the health of new hair. Check out the link below to learn more about the laser devices. And for a limited time, use the code Dr. Yoon, that's D-R-Y-O-U-N, to get a nice discount. So I had to have them taken out. I needed them both out. I needed them irrigated with antibiotics. It took about a year and a half to fully recover. When you get a breast implant infected, the treatment typically is to actually remove the implant. You can't keep it in. And the reason why is that no matter what antibiotic you're on, no matter how strong the antibiotics are, they're not gonna get rid of bacteria growing on the surface of an implant. So the question is, is how long do you have to keep the implants out if you have an infection like this? And the answer is at least six months. So now that my breasts are out, I'm not who I used to be at all. 
I feel like I have lost my whole career. Now, if you look her up on IMDb or other websites, you'll see she was a pretty big time actress in the day. Uh, her contemporary was Pam Anderson. So you know that Pam Anderson went to a ton of fame and fortune, whereas unfortunately she ended up having to have her implants taken out from this horrible infection. So you have some areas where the skin has good soft tissue thickness. You have many areas where you have basically zero soft tissue thickness. This is a very complicated case. So why isn't it as simple as just making new incisions and putting new implants into her breasts? Well, unfortunately, with infection like what she had, she probably has a ton of scar tissue there. Plus, it's possible that some parts of her tissue are a little bit thicker and other parts of her tissue are a little bit thinner, either from the operation or from the infection. The scar tissue left over from her previous surgeries could prevent her breast from expanding normally from an implant, and the uneven potential thicknesses of the different parts of her breast tissue could cause her breast to look kind of lumpy too. We would have to put something in to thicken up the tissue. We do it all the time. The options are to put a piece of cadaver skin underneath, okay. a piece of pig skin, or a piece of mesh, which will allow your own collagen to grow in. A big problem that they don't mention on the show, possibly because maybe she didn't have to pay for it, is that these products are really, really expensive. Cadaver skin for a breast like this could be upwards of $10,000 or more for each breast. For Heather's surgery today is to make incisions under her areola and carefully elevate her shriveled breast pockets off of her chest wall. I will then reinforce her thin skin with mesh and add two appropriately sized implants. From another board certified plastic surgeon, this looks like a very reasonable approach. Now I would do it a little bit differently from what I can see here. I would make the incisions underneath the breasts not around the areolas because studies are showing that the risk of capsular contracture or scar tissue is gonna be lower if you make the incision below the breast versus around the areola. On top of that, instead of using a mesh, I would probably use stratus, which is radiated pig skin. I would use that over the cadaver skin because it's much more economical, but I'd use that over the mesh because it starts out much thicker. There's three ways in which Heather's surgery could go south on me. Number one, she could bleach. Two, she has very thin skin the implant could erode through. And three, she could get another soft tissue infection, which would be a total disaster. So one, bleeding, pretty uncommon with an operation like this, but bleeding is a risk with any surgery. Number two, the implant eroding through the skin. How does that happen? Well, if the skin is exceedingly thin, it may not have enough blood supply to actually heal. What happens then is that the skin turns black, it falls off, and you could get potentially a hole in the actual skin revealing the implant underneath. That is disaster. And number three, she gets another MRSA infection. I shudder, honestly, at the thought. We've got a pocket elevator. We'll put an air sizer and just blow it up and see how well she'll do with the real thing. Ooh. Essentially what you're doing is you make the pocket and then you put the sizer in, you expand the sizer to the size of the permanent implant and see how it looks. If it's super tight and the contours don't look so good, you take the sizer out and you do more surgery. If it looks really good with the sizer in, you take the sizer out and then you put the permanent implant in after that. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove just that scar tissue from there without thinning out her skin too much. Her tissue looks so, so thin that trying to cut through that scar tissue, you're talking literal millimeters between cutting it out and it being safe and that cautery going through the skin and creating a big scar and even a burn on the surface of her skin. So that one area on the inside of her right breast at the top right here will ripple yeah. if we don't sew in a piece of mesh. New tissue then grows into that mesh to create more thickening to hopefully make the implant less palpable there. All right, let's put in a high profile implant. Okay. These would be D's. I have the utmost respect for Dr. Dubrow, but I never open up an implant pack and stick my hand in there. Currently, the best way to put an implant in is using a no touch technique, where you have the least amount of touching of the implant, because what you don't want is for your gloved hand to, let's say, touch something with bacteria on it, and then for you to transfer it onto the implant because you're touching the implant. Okay, let's sit her up and see what we've got. Not too shabby. I'm really loving what I see. That's the thing I love about plastic surgery, is that we can see the results of our hard work right there on the operating room table. My whole career has been based around my breasts. And when that was taken away from me, my career was taken away from me.
Before my breasts looked like something that you would have seen in a zombie movie. They look, they were zombie boobs. Now my breasts look like something out of the pages of a men's magazine. I feel like I'm a cougar. Can you tell she's a Hollywood actress? Great job to Dr. Debro. fantastic results, and I'm really happy for her. Take a peek at this playlist right up here where I react to more episodes of Boshed. Some of these are going to absolutely astound you. And if you've been enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And always remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.